This Council session takes place at a time that calls for strong and visionary leadership. Throughout history, there have been moments of profound gravity that cut the course of events between a before and a very different, more harmful after. We are at such tipping point. Remarkable progress that have been made over two decades in every region in decreasing conflict, reducing poverty, and expanding access to education and other rights, it's in jeopardy. Depleted by the pandemic, divided by growing polarization, undermined by growing environmental harm, and corroded by digital disinformation, hatred, and distortions of democracy, disregard of the rule of law, many societies are evolving or plunging into increased repression and violence, rising poverty, anger, and conflict. The military attack on Ukraine is putting at risk countless lives. Between Thursday morning and last night, our office has recorded 406 civilian casualties, including 102 killed, including seven children, and 304 injured. Most of these civilians were killed by explosive weapons with a wide impact area, including shelling from heavy artillery and multi-launch rocket systems and airstrikes. The real figures are, I fear, considerably higher. Meanwhile, millions of civilians, including vulnerable and older people, are forced to huddle in different forms of bomb shelters, such as underground stations to escape explosions. UNHCR reported that 422,000 people have fled the country and many more are internally displaced. My thoughts go out to them and to all those across the world who suffer. The calls for peace and human rights that are coming from individuals all over the world warn us that our future must not be a world that has become unmoored from the jointly agreed obligations of international human rights law and from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Over the next three days, an unprecedented number of dignitaries will participate in this high-level segment. This is a vital opportunity to come together and meet this grave and pivotal moment with action. I ask that as we do so, all of us place first and foremost the world's people, their shared and universal aspirations and rights at the center of our deliberations. Excellencies, it is precisely at a tipping point or times of crisis when investment in multilateral and human rights-based action brings swift and effective solutions, as well as laying out the path toward, towards greater, more shared development and peace. Our constant refrain has been that more needs to be done to prevent conflict and human rights crisis. It is time now for strong preventive action that will match our words. Action to end conflict, respect the UN Charter, and abide the international law. Action to establish the fundamental justice, services, opportunities, and rights that, develop, that build development, resolve grievances, and reestablish truth, sorry, trust. Action to eradicate discrimination, which impedes people's exercise of every kind of right, and is at the root of so much misery and despair. Action to ensure that digital technology advances rights rather than undermining them everywhere. Action to enable the full participation of the people in decision making so that they can believe in and trust their institutions. Action to revive the health of our planet whose destruction is at the root of growing poverty, displacement and harm. We must also with unprecedented vigor fight corruption with ro which robs the public treasury for private gain, creating predatory elites whose interests may sharply diverge from the well-being of the people. Tackling the root causes of grievances and instability and investing in justice and human rights and human dignity is urgent to the task of guiding societies in every region away from reckless and escalating violence. It will help create deep and long-term solutions to the harm that has been done by the pandemic. This preventive work is also essential to meeting the challenge of climate change and the scourges of extreme poverty and forced displacement. Excellencies, there are no winners and no losers here. We're all diminished by conflict. 